Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can change the color of your house in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the picture of a house that I started with, and it is a gray house. And I'm going to show you how you can change the color of that house to anything that you want it to be. In this case, I've changed it to bright pink. So we're going to step by step through this process. But one other thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at a house like this, a pure white house. And I'm going to show you how you can change the color of this house because the typical way that you would change the color of the first house simply isn't going to work for this house. And to be able to realistically color something that starts off being white is a little tricky. But I'm going to show you the secret to doing that. We're going to start with this house and I'm going to show you the basics of how I recolored it. I'm not going to show you all the way through the selection because I'm going to save that for another video, but I'm going to show you the basics of making the selection. The first thing you want to do is to convert the background of the image into a regular layer. So I'm just going to double click on it and just click OK when that dialog appears. Now this is a regular layer. When I'm making a selection for a job like this, I'm not going to be thinking selections as much as I'm going to be thinking masks because masking is really the only way to approach a task like this. So we're going to take this image layer and I'm going to drag and drop it onto this new layer icon here. And what that does is to create a duplicate of that layer. Now you could just as easily right click the layer and choose duplicate layer. But whatever it is, you want a second version of the house on top of the first. And we're just going to use this second version. Now we need a method of making a selection and we need to make it into a mask. And for this image, I'm going to use the quick select tool. It's up here and it shares a toolbar position with the magic wand tool. The quick select tool makes a reasonably good job of selecting over the house. I'm going to start by pressing the close square bracket key just to increase this brush size. And I'm going to start painting over the area that I want to select. Now I can click or I can paint. Now sometimes this tool can take off on you and if it does hold the Alt or Option key and just paint over the area that you want to remove because you can teach this tool how you want it to make a selection as you go and it will learn from what you do. So you're going to make a selection over all the parts of the house that you want to repaint. And so we're starting with this colored house and we're making a selection over all the gray color. Now this is not the world's greatest selection, but it's a really good start. And once I've made it, I'm ready to create my mask. And to do that, I'm going to click here on the mask icon. I'm making sure that I have selected the topmost of these two layers, which at the moment contain identical images. And I'm going to click on the add layer mask icon. And what that does is it creates a mask so that the white area is the house that we are going to recolor and the black area is not going to be affected. We can see how good a selection we've made by turning off the bottom layer because what we should be left with is just the gray parts of the house. Well, we've got a few extra little bits and so I would zoom into these and start removing them. And again, I'll probably use the quick select tool but I'll size it down smaller using the open square bracket key and just select over the areas that I want to remove. Now I'm looking here at my color palette and black is my foreground color. So if I press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac, I'll just be able to deselect that area by painting over it in the mask. I'm just going to select over this area too. And again, making sure I have my mask selected, Alt Backspace, Option Delete to add that to the mask. And you might see here that there's also some white area here. This is some of the white paintwork for the house and we don't want to be painting that. So I'll do the same thing. When I'm done, I'm going to revert to seeing the entire image by clicking the image layer underneath and I'm going to zoom back out. Now I've gone ahead with the other image and made a much better selection of the mask. And if you want to see a full video on masking this image, then look in my video collection for that video. For now, we're going back to the original of this colored house. I'm just going to take it back so that right now it looks exactly the same as the image we were just working with, just with a much better mask. Here's the mask that I've created. 
So we have a mask layer and we have the regular image underneath. And now what we want to do is to change the house color. So I'm going to choose a color for the house. I think this time we'll paint it a sort of orange color. So I'm going to select this orange color here. And I'm going to add a new layer to my image by clicking on the new layer icon. Now I want this layer at the very top, so I'm just dragging it to the top of the layer stack. And I want it filled with orange. Now you can do all sorts of things at this point. You can go and get the paint bucket tool and just tip orange paint into this. Or you can use the keystroke Alt Backspace on the PC, Option Delete on the Mac, and that just fills that layer with orange. So we have an orange layer on top and our house mask below. What we want to do next is to just use the orange color where it actually coincides with this mask house underneath. And we do that by creating what's called a clipping mask. So I'm going to click this topmost layer and I can do it from the menus using Layer, Create Clipping Mask. I'm just going to undo that because I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. You can hold the Alt key on the PC or the Option key on the Mac and hold your mouse over the separator between these two layers and then just click once and that creates your clipping mask. Now right now I'm seeing not only a few problems with my mask that probably need to be tidied up but I'm also seeing a bigger problem. You see, this is like just going and painting big slab of orange color over the image. We've lost all the nuances. We've lost the weatherboards that are on this house and we've lost all the shading. Well, it's very easy to get that back. What we're going to do is to take this layer and blend it using what's called the color blend mode. So I'm just going to click on color and now you can see that we're seeing the weatherboards. What we're doing is we're seeing all the detail in the layers below, but we're just changing the color. So we're borrowing all the shading through for our recolored house. Having done this, if you want to look at, for example, shades of orange or things that are relatively close to orange but not quite, we could go ahead and add an adjustment layer here. So I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to choose Hue Saturation and click OK. And this gives me a hue saturation adjustment layer. And this allows me to recolor the orange. So if I wanted to, I can come across and recolor the orange. But I'm going to want to limit this to just the layer below. So I'm just going to click on that because I don't want to recolor the sky. But now you can see that as I drag across, the entire rest of the image is staying stable, but I can change the actual color that I have applied to this image. So we could test different colors of our house and see what they might look like in situ. So that's the way of dealing with recoloring a house where your original house has some color in it, as this one does. The original house is a dark gray, and so we're able to go and mask it and then apply a different color to it. The situation with a white house is very different, so let's go and have a look at how we would solve that problem. Let's go and grab the white house and I've already made the mask for my white house so you can see here that I've made a pretty good mask of all the white pieces of this house. So let's go ahead and do exactly as we did before and add a new layer to this and this time let's go and color this house blue. So I'm just going to fill this layer with blue alt backspace on the PC option delete on the Mac. And then I'm going to create a clipping mask of it by holding down the Alt key option on the Mac and just clicking here. Now again, what I want to do is go and blend this using the color blend mode. And this is where the problem is really, really apparent. We wanted this house to be this sort of blue color. And while it's a fairly good shade of blue in the areas that had some shading in the original image, you can see that the areas that were very light, very white, the color hasn't stuck at all. This is the original image and you can see that our blue coloring hasn't really been applied to this at all. In short, this process is not going to work on recoloring white. But there is a way that you can do that. I'm just going to take off the clipping mask here by choosing Layer Release Clipping Mask, or I could go ahead and use those same keystrokes to release that clipping mask. I'm going to turn the layer off. Now, at the moment I'm working in RGB color mode, and 
We've already seen that recolouring is not going to work in RGB colour mode, but Photoshop offers us other colour modes and one of those is the LAB colour mode. So I'm going to take this image to lab colour. Image, mode, and I'm going to select here LAB colour. I don't want to merge my layers, so I'm going to click Don't Merge. Now on the face of it, the image looks just the same in lab colour mode as it did in RGB. But let's have a look and see what happens when we add our blue colour, when we blend it. Here we have a very different result. The blue is actually sticking to the white areas of this image. There is a difference between the LAB colour space and the RGB colour space. And the difference is this. In LAB colour space, you can have colours that are blue but are as bright as white. You can have a red colour that is really, really red, but it's also, it has the same brightness as pure white. Now, it's not possible in RGB to do that, but it is possible in LAB colour modes. So what we'll want to do is to recolour this house. We'll want to apply this to the image. So I'm just going to merge these two layers together with Control or Command E so that the colour is applied to the image. And then I'm going to take it back to RGB colour mode. Image mode, RGB colour. I don't want to merge, so I'm just going to click Don't Merge. So now we have our blue house and we can go ahead and do exactly the same as we did previously and go and add an adjustment layer to this image because now that we've got the colour into the image, we are going to be okay if we want to recolour it. So we can go ahead and drag here and add different colours to our image. We can reduce the saturation. We can make it a little bit lighter if we want to. But we will again want to limit the colour that we're applying to this image to just the layer below. So I'm going to click here on the clipped mask layer so that we're not recolouring the trees and the sky in the process. All we want to do is effectively recolour this building. So again, we can apply any colour that we like to this building. We can reduce the saturation, make it a little bit darker try and blend it in a little bit more, find something that is a little bit more attractive for this building. But by using the LAB colour mode, we've been able to realistically apply a colour to an image in a way that we were not able to do using the RGB colour mode. Now, of course, very obviously, this colour change effect is not limited to houses. You can apply this to anything at any time. Just be aware that if you're trying to apply a dark colour, to something that is quite light or white, that you'll probably need to do that using LAB colour mode because that's the only way that the effect can be achieved. To finish this image off and to make the resulting recolour just a little bit more believable, I'm going here to my mask layer. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drop its opacity down a little bit. And what that's doing is bringing up a little bit of the image underneath through the colour layer. So we're getting again a little bit more brightness and darkness appearing in the image. Just enough, I think, to make the effect look just a little bit more realistic. Now, of course, this effect is not limited to recolouring houses. You can use it to recolour anything. Just be aware that if you're going to recolour something that is already quite dark, then you can fairly easily recolour it using the first process, which is just applying a filled layer to the image, clipping it using a mask, and then setting that colour layer to the colour blend mode. But if you're trying to recolour something that's white or very, very light, and in particular, if you're going to recolour it to a darker colour, then you're probably going to need to take it to LAB colour to get the colour to stick. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.